All right, guys, the time has come, and I knew it was only a matter of time the way I've been talking about it. My hydro is pretty much blown on the left-hand side, and my walker mower, I've been bragging about how these are the original hydros. I've uh, rebuilt, I shouldn't say rebuilt, I've replaced the uh, outer bearings, the input shafts uh, on both of them. I have a couple of videos on those, but uh, slowly it's just been... Uh, losing power on the left hand side uh, so I'll actually demonstrate it here I'll show you what I'll do is I'll put it full full power forward and I'll release the right hand side and then I'll release the left hand side and you can see the difference of how the uh, one side doesn't want to doesn't want to spin the tire or it doesn't have any power so let me set you up and again, when I flip the handle, watch, you'll see the one tire and you'll see how it'll rip out and spin and have plenty of power. And then you'll notice that that side doesn't. You can tell a clear difference there. So uh, it actually started happening about three weeks ago, and I noticed that the fluid was a little low. So I topped the fluid off. Didn't take much, maybe, I don't know, four or five tablespoons of fluid. It wasn't much. You know, they only hold about a, a quart each one. And uh, slowly I just noticed on hills it started losing power. And uh, one thing I want to mention if you're watching this video because you're having a similar problem, uh, another common issue with uh, losing power on your hydros and it seems like you don't have enough power going up hills, seems like something's slipping, uh, a couple of things. Um, this, this drive belt and this drive belt uh, could be worn uh, to the point where the spring tension isn't holding enough and it could be slipping on the pulleys. That's actually pretty common. Uh, another thing that I noticed is a... Uh, a big issue especially people that don't maintain their machines is uh, these little bearings or bushings that are in here if you don't lube them up you've got this spring tension here that pulls down it'll get really tight inside here and then it won't be able to hold tension on the belt and the belt will look tight it'll look like it's closed um, but because the spring pulling down isn't directly pulling pressure or pushing pressure down depending on what side you are on the belt uh, it's not holding enough tension, so it actually allows the belt to slip. Um, but the reason I know that's not the case now is, well, for one, I've got new belts and I've checked all that. But uh, uh, number two is uh, it's only one side. Um, if both sides seem to be slipping at the same time, that means it's the belts, okay? Because they, they kind of all run off the same system. If it's going to slip here or slip here, they're both, they're both going to do that. So that's how you know. So, like I said, this, uh, this hydro has had it. It's, uh, I don't know, got to be close to 10,000 hours now on it at this point. Uh, many motors. I don't know if any of you have watched any of my previous videos, but this is, I think, motor number four, or probably the second or third motor, but it's been rebuilt, been replaced, you know, so and so through the years. So I don't want to go into all the details. Look back at other videos on that, but this uh, this walker has lived many lives, and I originally bought it for $650 about 10 years ago. So uh, the clock is reading 4,000-something hours on it now, but it has way more than that. So, But that's where we're at. We're going to uh, go ahead and uh, remove this hydro. It's, it's uh, not a bad ordeal uh, to do. It's going to be very similar to the uh, video that I already have on replacing the... Uh, the uh, input shaft bearing and seal. Uh, and the reason why it's very similar to that is that video I actually, I believe I took the hydro right off. Maybe I didn't. I might not have taken the hydro off. Or maybe I did. I can't remember. It was a while ago. I think it was a couple years ago I did the video. But 
I think I might have taken it off, but I probably didn't have any details about how to take the hydro off. So uh, we'll go through the step-by-step -step process. Uh, now the process is going to be a little bit different depending on if you're taking out the left-hand side, which is the front, uh, which connects to that drive, or the uh, right-hand side, which obviously connects to the right. So that's in the rear. Uh, so that front one there is the one we're going to be changing. Um, for starters, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Grab my shop vac, which I hope, yep, I do have it down here at the shop. And now I'm going to clean all this grass out and kind of get everything neatened up and cleaned up in here so I can see what I'm working with. And uh, we're going to remove this battery. And that gives us kind of a clean shot to there. And then we're going to have to remove some linkages on the bottom and the side. And then there's just kind of four bolts that bolt it right into the gear box itself. And then we'll be able to remove it right from here and uh, replace it. Um, and what I'm doing is I've got this parts motor, uh, parts mower that I've been dismantling. Uh, actually, the last part that was taken off of it, I pulled this side cover off the motor and actually removed these uh, rod bolts for uh, Brandon Brandon uh, Burnt uh, Burnt's lawn lawn care. He uh, needed a couple of rod bolts because I guess he mistook his uh, torque rating of foot he, he mistook his torque rating that was supposed to be inch pounds for foot pounds and snapped uh, by mistake his old bolts or at least one of them so uh, I pulled I think it was three of these off yeah there's these two and there's still one left in here I left in here for now but but yeah I've been using this uh, mower for many many parts I haven't taken the blower out because the blower is pretty much useless uh, it's pretty worn but I've taken a ton of parts off this mower uh, and I had already removed both the hydros uh, because they were uh, both in very good shape. Uh, original seal. Uh, this was one of them. I actually broke the seal and took this off just to check the fluid that was in it because I am going to put some fresh fluid in it now. Uh, but it still has the original fluid in it because it was sealed up. But this is the, uh, the hydro, the used hydro off that machine that we're going to be installing into there the other hydro that is missing is gone i actually sent to uh randy at countryside lawn care what's up randy and uh this is about what i got left for parts if anybody's still looking for parts i still got a good uh control panel here but this is off of an efi uh, you could use it for a gas mo model if you wanted uh, it does have the hour meter and uh temp and volts and all this stuff uh, the temp, because it was a water-cooled uh, electric uh, or EFI model. I think it was a 31 horsepower. Uh, MTL is the model right there. But this is in really good shape. Got some good uh, lights on it, the key switch, everything. Uh, this is all complete. I still have a, a EFI computer for a, co a Kohler motor, which is a Bosch unit. There's the, the numbers on that. I still got this uh, jack shaft assembly, which does go bad and got to rebuilt after a while. But this one is uh, was replaced fairly new on the mower that I got, so I wanted to save it. It was a fairly new part. I've got this main pulley that I'm actually probably going to be saving when I do a Predator um, install on the Walker mower. I'm still going to, at some point, retrofit the... Uh, Predator Harbor Freight Motor, the 23 horsepower, I think it is, a 22 horsepower, maybe it's 23. Uh, and there's, uh, you can buy a uh, adapter so you can connect this pulley right onto it um, and uh, motor plate. So it should be, uh, the main parts of making that swap uh, are made uh, aftermarket. So it'll be a couple of small modifications and I should be able to uh, fit one of those in. And I still got a spare starter here as well, or a belt. It's got a couple other uh, spare parts, but if anybody's looking, uh, hit me up. Glad that I hadn't given away this Hydro yet because I'd be buying one myself. Um, not the end of the world. It wouldn't be a bad thing to replace it with a new one anyways. Um, but since I do have this and I know this is a clean working unit, I did use that mower, uh, that motor. I ran that mower for a little bit uh, as I was diagnosing the head gasket that I replaced on it and still had a problem with. Uh, and all the hydro units worked uh, flawlessly on it. So I know that these are uh, the one that Randy is still running currently in one of his walkers. And this one I know is good. So let's get going. And uh, sorry about the long introduction, but I wanted to take care of a couple of points that people might have questions on. Let's have at it. 
All right, that's a little better. Use the vacuum to get rid of the majority of all the grass that's kind of made its way in there. Um, you do notice that my gearbox is wet. Um, I have uh, replaced the O-rings that are on the parking brake pawl. Uh, and uh, for whatever reason, the O-rings that I put in must not have been the right size or what. But ever since I did that, it slowly weeped out a little bit of gear gearbox fluid on that gearbox. I think this one's doing it too. Yeah, this one's a little wet. So that's why it's a mess over there. So haven't really dealt with it because these gearboxes are very slow speed rotating units. It takes pretty much putting a bag of rocks inside there to blow one of these. Uh, they're just basic heavy duty gears, steel gears in there, really nothing to it. Uh, so as long as you don't run it completely out of fluid and forever, it's... Uh, take every uh, take uh, take quite a bit to uh to blow one so one of these times i'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, proper o-rings and see if that doesn't seal it back up so that's why you're seeing that a little wet just wanted to explain that but uh the hydro is connected to it right here is what we're going to go at uh, what i'm going to do is remove this uh strut here and that'll allow this body to flip forward a little bit more give us a, a little better visibility and let's get a uh, light in here so we can see what we're looking at and we'll start dismantling and go from there um before i flip this forward i'm going to remove the deck uh, because we do want to get underneath uh, underneath the front of the mower because that's where we're going to disconnect the arm, uh, the control arm, which actually will give you a good visual right here because I believe it's still on this hydro. Yeah. This arm right here is on the bottom of the machine, so pretty much the deck is like right here. It's really kind of tight. You could do it without taking the deck off, but the deck, as you know, on a walker is pretty easy to remove, so we're going to take it out of the way and then flip the body forward and uh, get going. You can see how just that one bolt opens us right up. Now we got plenty of room to work on it. Uh, what I was just doing is just disconnecting the switch that I have for my headlights. You probably don't have this on your machine, um, but it goes through this hole in the cover and the wires just aren't long enough to reach. So I just pulled the switch out to allow us to have enough room to swing it forward. So next up, we're gonna remove that battery. All right, so my plan of attack is I'm going to remove, there's this bracket right here. It's got a nut and a bolt right down here and one right up here, appears to be 7 16 heads. And that will take this whole mechanism with the spring and everything right off here. We'll disconnect the linkages and the spring on this side and we'll be able to take this whole thing right out of the way so it's not an issue. And uh, pull this belt off and then we're pretty much wide open here. We should be able to remove it from from there after we get the linkage off the bottom. So if you've never taken one of these belts off before, it's very simple. Walker makes this so you can change the belts in the field without tools, which is really nice. Basically just grab hold of this pulley and lift it up. And that's the tensioner on the belt. And uh, you can pull the belt right off. It's also a good time to check your idler pulleys make sure there's no odd sounds when you spin them and they're nice and tight. Mine have been replaced fairly recently so they should be fine. This one's got a little, little noisier than I would like and it's got a little play so I'm going to order one of those up because that won't be too long before that's going to be failing. If I had it now I'd replace it but I don't so Let's see, you got a pretty good amount of play. And that hydro again, which I've replaced this front bearing already once. But don't be alarmed, there will be a little bit of play in this. 
uh, for whatever reason, it still doesn't leak, even though you've got a little bit of play. I've yet to have one leak through the input side. The way it's designed with the shaft that goes through, it's actually just free floating and it goes into another, like a spline. So it's not really directly connected to the hydro itself. So uh, for whatever reason, they designed it that way, it works and uh, it seems to last pretty well. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, disconnect the rest. So this is the linkage right here that I showed you on the other one. I'm just going to disconnect it right here. Just got a tapered shaft. I believe this is a 15 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that. And then we're going to go ahead and just pop this right off. Just take a little pry bar or something uh, to be able to pop that off. It shouldn't be too hard. And uh, then we'll be able to take it out from the top. Okay, so I'll disconnect it on the bottom. You can just leave this here so it can await the new or the uh, other hydro. I can't call it new, it's a used hydro. Okay, now we're just down to, probably gonna grab the vacuum again and clean this up a little bit more so we can see it, but there's four bolts. One, two, and then underneath here, three and four and the whole hydro will come right off. Come on. Okay, we got that one with the hydro release lever attached to it. two on the underside let me see if i can set you up so you can see where they are all right it's at a tough angle hopefully you can see all right so of course my phone battery died halfway through that but these are the two bottom bolts that i pulled out same as the upper ones and we should be able to uh pull the hydro right out of its place right now right where she sits so there she is all filthy and nasty let's go ahead and place the other one right next to it there we go notice the fan direction is the correct way the left of the fan is in and the right of the fan of each blade is out same with this one fan left of the fan is in and the right is out so that's the way the fan should be oriented on the left hand side hydro you can put them on backwards and it will pull air in the opposite direction that it's supposed to so all we need to do right now is i'm going to go ahead and remove this 
control uh, lever off because I'm just using the one that's on the mower still. Don't need this. So uh, we'll get a good, good look at that, how I took that off on the bottom of the motor. Um, I don't know if the video caught it or not when I took the one off the mower. That was about when my battery died, but if it didn't, don't fear because we can uh, we can watch the process here. Just a 15 millimeter. And then if it doesn't just come right out, what I do is I just took this uh, punch that's got a little bit of a taper to it. Can you see that? Working with this camera equipment's tough today. Sorry, guys. And then tappy tap. comes right off as you can see this is just tapered make sure the keyway is still on there or the key is in the keyway right there and you can see there's a little notch in there where the key goes in so that's all set let's go ahead and uh, place this one right inside the machine All right, guys, I'm running blind here with the camera. Hoping that you can see what I'm doing here. But here's our linkage. I'm gonna pop right back on here. There we go. This one seems to be in really good shape, so I think we're gonna be good here. Go ahead and finagle this back into place.
All I did there is just put the uh, cotter pin back in there. Just gonna toss the battery back in. We'll be back in business. All right, we're back in business. Let's go ahead and uh, start it up. I'm just gonna run it around without the deck on it for now, just to make sure everything's all right. And uh, let's see what we get. I don't think it took me but 45 minutes start to finish. We got our replacement hydro working fine. I'm gonna put the deck back on and we're back in business. Walker has more than nine lives like a cat. This thing's got many, many lives. We're in the teens now, I think, so. There we go, running good. Used hydro installed. Back in business. Be out, out mowing some more lawns tomorrow. All right, guys. Hopefully this helps somebody out. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace.